All right, so we at least distinguish that in the problem it says x plus three is the factor, right? Of two x cubed plus x squared minus five x plus two, and that's f of x also. And we also said, or you could have said negative three is the zero, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out the remaining zeros. Focus. So we need to figure out the remaining zeros. Well, one thing we need to do, or Remember, the remaining zeros is also kind of thinking of like the remaining factors. Yeah. Right? So when we're trying to factor some out, what we're going to do is we're going to have to do division. Okay? And to synthetic do... Synthetic division, right? Well, we can do synthetic or long division. It's not really going to matter. Which one? However, one? synthetic, when you have a binomial mm -hmm. in linear form, that means that x has, a fact, uh, x has a degree of 1. Right. Since it's in linear form, a linear factor... Synthetic division is the easiest. So what we do is we like to take any zero that's given to us. Since here we're given a zero of negative three, I can figure out the remaining two, one, negative five, and two. So I'm going to use division to figure out what's going to be left over. And you know, yeah. So I'll use division. So drop down the two. Negative three times two is a negative six. One plus negative six is negative 5. Negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be a uh, 15. Positive 15. This becomes a 10. This isn't a 0. Whatever. It's not a 0. That's the problem. It's not a factor. Oh, I remember. I messed this problem up. It's not a factor. Right. All right. Well, that's perfect. Is it? So therefore, yeah, because I remember I wrote down the problem wrong. So therefore, if you notice, this is a good teaching tool. This becomes negative 30, right? It becomes positive 30. Well, or no, no, I'm sorry. Right. So negative 30, so you get negative 28, right? So that means you have a remainder. So therefore, negative 3 is not, is not a 0, right? Or this is not a factor, okay. right? So what actually the problem actually tells us, actually the problem told us, it wasn't actually positive 3, it was actually 2. So let's actually do this for two. Okay. All right. Just positive two or negative two? What? Positive two or negative two? Well, um, it's going to be negative two. Now, here's another thing. If you can remember, just study for your test. Yeah. Remember, we talked about P over Q? Yeah. Well, what are all the possible rational zeros? You take the factors of two. Which one? Plus or minus two, plus or minus one. Okay. All over. Plus or minus two or plus or minus one. Two, plus or minus one. So that means your possible zeros are plus or minus one, two over two, and plus or minus two, and plus or minus one half. One half. So is three even a possible factor? No. Remember, it's rational numbers. So three is not even a possible factor. So you could have looked at that and been like, hey, that's wrong anyways. I already know that three is not even possible because three is a rational number, but these are my only rational numbers I can have. Okay. So anyways, once I figured that problem out, I figured I wrote the problem down, problem down wrong. I changed it to negative two. Drop this down equals two. Negative two times two is negative, negative four. Gives me negative three. Negative two times negative three is gonna give me a positive six. Negative one. Now it's wrong, positive one. Negative two times one gives me a negative two, zero. Therefore, this, remember if that's your remainder, that's your constant, that's your linear, that's your squared. Always just kind of work backwards. Yeah. So I know that x plus two is one factor, right? Right. So therefore my remaining factor now is, these are your coefficients, so it's two x squared minus three x plus one. And now I need to factor this. Again? Oh wait, factor. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you could use you could use synthetic division again, but you don't know what another factor is. So you could have picked one of those other factors and then done synthetic division again on this, but you don't know what the other factor is or what another zero is. Okay. So you can just use normal factoring techniques. I'm not sure. Remember I, okay. Remember, this is AX squared plus BX plus C. Take your little thing and you do A times B and then, I'm sorry, A C. times C and then do B. A times C is 2, B is negative 3. So what two numbers multiply to give you 2 
Negative okay. seven, negative one. Right, negative one, negative two. So then what I do is I rewrite it as two x squared minus two x minus one x plus one. Wait, what? All I did was, see how this, I just rewrote my middle terms. Yeah. I didn't change anything. I just, <laughs> instead of writing the negative three, I wrote negative two x and negative one. Okay. So then you just group then, what you do is you factor this and you factor that. So what I'm going to do is I'm here, I'm going to want to pull out a 2. So I'm left with, or I'm sorry, let's pull out a 2x. Two two x. So I'm left with x minus uh, 1. And here I'll factor out a negative 1. And I'll be left with x minus 1. Wait, then you notice why that. Why is it an x minus 1? Which one, for here or for there? The first one. Because that's two, if you pull a 2x left there, it's still negative, so there's only a 1 left over. Every single one of those No, problems. why is there a 1? Every single one. Move it to the next one. I'll be there in just a second. Why is there one? Move to the next one. And the next one. Come on, I know there's one left. I'm sorry? Why is there a negative one? Because I factored out these no, bullshit. No, other one. Because if you think about it, Take if you multiply this back over, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative one is negative two. So it's like the, uh, op it's like the if opposite. If it was positive point. two, would it be? Be plus one. Think about this way. Um, Wait, Mr. McLogan. Yep. Why couldn't we just said that negative one and negative two were factors? I mean, well, I'll show you. I'll show you why you're going to get your factors. If I if I distribute or if I factor this out, you'd be left with three times one plus five, right? When you factor it, when you divide a three out of a three, you're left, only left with one. Oh, okay. It's I the same it. thing. All right. So now I can factor out an x minus one. And I'm left with 2x minus 1. So yes, if you would have said x minus 1 was a factor, and then x minus 2, that would have been wrong. Because that's not your factor. Plus 1 half of the factor. It's x minus 1, and 2x minus 1 is your factor. However, Zero. your zeros, so now my all my zeros, so my factors are x plus 2, x minus 1, and 2x minus 1. So therefore, if those are my factors, my zeros, or when you set them equal to zero, are x equals negative two, one, and one half. That's it. So the main kind of moral of the story is you figure out, you find what your zero is, mm -hmm. and then you just use synthetic division. If you're given two zeros, you might, you're probably gonna want to do, do synthetic, synthetic division, division again. again. Right. So you get whatever your, you know, um, quotient is, and then use the other zero to do synthetic division again. But this one, we only had one, and plus once we got a trinomial, we could factor. So I know you don't like factoring, but it just that's, confuses me. I don't know. It's not All easy. Right.